Hello students. In this physiology video lecture class of Karnataka LMS, we shall be discussing today regarding osmoregulation in migratory fishes. If you have gone to my previous class video lecture on osmoregulation, there I have discussed regarding different osmoregulatory mechanisms, means to say how the freshwater animals bring about their osmoregulation and how the marine fish or marine animals bring about their osmoregulation and we have also discussed regarding some of the osmoregulatory structures in different animals. Now there our concentration was towards a freshwater animal and a marine animal. How it spends its life throughout in its specific habitat. Now the topic which we are choosing is more interesting because here we are choosing two important migratory fishes. Number one, that is the eel, and number two, that is the salmon fish. The interesting fact is regarding these migratory fish are they switch between two osmo regulatory mechanisms. Okay, so they have to change from one basic osmoregulatory mechanism to another osmoregulatory mechanism. Uh, for example, the eels that travel from freshwater to sea and the salmon travels from the seawater to freshwater for breeding reasons and here you can understand the fishes are going to face the problem of both hypotonic and hypotonic medium okay so they have to change their osmoregulatory mechanisms inside the body to get adjusted to the new place they are migrating to okay so with this background we shall try to understand how these two fish try to change their body uh, mechanisms to cope with the changes that are going to occur in the surrounding water okay so let us get started now this picture you can see this is salmon and this is the european eel now we have seen we have seen there the migration is of two types number one the catadromous migration anadromous migration eels catadromous migration means migration from freshwater to the sea where you see that in case of eels and the migration from sea to freshwater is what is known as the anadromous migration that is seen in case of the salmons okay now we, we see how these fishes are going to face two different situations because they are going to live in two different habitats so because of that so they need to be switched between um, one type of osmoregulatory mechanism uh, technically to say they need to switch between hyporegulator they need to switch between a uh, hyporegulator to the hyperregulator okay so this is the important interesting thing about this fish now how this switching is done between hypo hyperregulation let us see now so let us consider the first example that is the eels as i have told you you eels um, basically live in fresh water for breeding purpose they will travel to the sea so eels come under urihaline fish group that means they can get adjusted to the wide range of changes in the salinity so we have discussed regarding this in the previous class so urihaline means what so it is the fish has the ability to manage or to adjust to wide range of changes in the salinity that is why they have the ability to it now as usual initially when they are living in water they have uh, fresh water they have the problem of hydration we know the mechanism between uh, behind the um, 
freshwater fish that adapt so many physiological mechanisms to manage with the excessive water that is entering into their body okay so that is hydration due to endosmosis the freshwater animals have a hypertonic condition where their body fluid concentration is more and the surrounding medium that, that the fresh water is hypotonic and because of this the water starts entering into the body of the freshwater animal similarly even eels when they are living in fresh water they do face the problem of hydration now for the excessive water that is entering one of the mechanisms adapted by the freshwater eels are is production of the dilute urine okay so they produce dilute urine which consists of lot of water and hence they can dehydrate their body along with that they do have efficient kidneys and these kidneys help in excreting lot of water at the same time remember when they are excreting lot of water they are going to lose some salt along with the water now if you see in the surrounding medium the salt is not there the salt cannot enter because they are hypotonic and the salts that are going to through the urine are reabsorbed efficiently by the kidneys okay so kidneys perform two important roles one is excreting the dilute urine and the other one is the reabsorption of the essential salts now the salt has that occurs through the urine is recovered by one more mechanism by what are known as chloride absorbing cells that are present in the gill epithelium and these uh, cells they absorb the salt making sure are reducing the amount of salt that is lost from the body now this is the picture showing the migration of uh, eels and you can see in the fresh water the eel develops and becomes adult and the adult migrates to ocean for breeding purposes they lay eggs and the larva develops into an elver elver starts swimming towards the ocean now here comes the when the uh, elver start moving towards the fresh water here comes the challenge of osmoregulation and when the adult is moving towards the sea here again comes the challenge of osmoregulation in these two places the animal has to behave as if it can get adjusted to both fresh water and marine water and remember this is not a um, sudden change that occurs in the body of the eel instead they take time they gradually move towards the for example if the adult eel is moving towards the ocean they slowly move such that their body mechanisms can revert whatever mechanisms they have to get adjusted to the fresh water they has to get reversed almost here when they are traveling towards the ocean now gradually when they are traveling towards the ocean the mechanisms that were present in the fresh water they would get because for example to say in the fresh water the kidneys are excreting dilute urine now here they need to change it to producing concentrated urine they need to eliminate lot of water here in the fresh water but here they need to eliminate lot of salts from the body so it needs start functioning in a opposite direction and even the chloride secreting cells as we have seen in the previous slide where in the fresh water they reabsorb the salts to prevent the salt loss and in this case when they are entering into the ocean they need to excrete lot of salts from the body lot of excess salts that are entering into the body will be excreted by the chloride uh, secreting cells they behave in a manner uh, to excrete salts in fresh water and they uh, sorry they reabsorb salts in fresh water at the same time they excrete salts when the eel is moving towards the ocean okay so we shall see on that point wise now see here um, as i have told you for breeding purpose they travel to the ocean 
so here comes the challenge of conserving water because the eel body is uh, the hypotonic and the ocean water is hypotonic now from eel water starts moving towards the ocean okay so the body gets dehydrated so for that reason the eel needs to conserve water when it is entering into the ocean it needs to conserve water and it has to maintain an hypotonic situation so this is how it can may it can avoid dehydration it has to have a uh, hypertonic uh, fluids inside the body compared to the surrounding medium okay now when they are entering into the water due to the hypertonic situation in the surroundings lot of water is lost through gill membrane and also through urine and to compensate this loss that is occurring when the eel is entering into the ocean first behavior they do is they drink a lot of water when the eel is there in fresh water this behavior is not seen this is important students remember here this is the point for which we had so much of introduction before now what are the changes that the animal adapt to itself in order to uh, manage with the new challenge that they are facing in the ocean water first thing they are going to do is they drink a lot of water to compensate the dehydration that is occurring in their body and not only that the kidneys which used to produce lot of dilute urine they used to excrete lot of water when the eel was in fresh water now it starts absorbing lot of water okay it, it produces concentrated urine another important uh, change of uh, change physiological reversal inside the body of the eel then another uh, type of fossils chloride secreting cells that are present they start excreting lot of chloride ions and sodium ions now these chloride ions are excreted out by the chloride secreting cells and sodium ions diffuse passively across the gills okay so like this there is a reversal of physiological mechanisms in the eel body as it is migrating towards the ocean so okay so it is a switch from fresh water my osmoregulator mechanism to the marine motor osmoregulatory mechanisms okay now one of the important behaviors that we see in eels is they start drinking water once they um, start moving towards the ocean water now when they start drinking water a lot of salts enter into their body again the eels start facing the problem of excessive salts in the body this has to be eliminated out okay for that the gill epithelium and the kidneys play an important role where they will uh, start excreting a lot of salt from the body so you can see here begins to throw out excessive salt and here also you can see the kidneys start producing highly concentrated urine and they are efficient enough to re, um, to excrete a lot of excessive salt that are entering into their body apart from that to bring about these physiological changes definitely there need to be role of hormones in case of eels now two important hormones play role in osmoregulatory switch between fresh water to marine water one is arginine vasotocin another one is the angiotensin now the challenge here is the when the eel is moving from fresh water to sea lot of water they are losing they are getting dehydrated now release of vasotocin and angiotensin 2 has an anti diuretic action on the body this is important this anti diuretic action of these hormones helps the animal to conserve a lot of water now it significantly decreases the rate of glomerular filtration as a result urine cannot be so dilute urine holds a lot of Uh, in fact, the so kidneys are glomerulus holds a lot of water. Okay, so both the hormones have anti-diuretic effect. Now let us come to another uh, fish that is salmon. Now the previous fish that we have seen 
is migrating from fresh water to the ocean for breeding reason and the elver moves to uh, the fresh water from the ocean. Now, another fish that is a salmon salar, it has anadromous kind of migration. That means initially it grows up in the oceans and the adult moves to the freshwater rivers for breeding purposes. Okay, So again, there is opposite uh, change uh, in the osmoregulatory mechanisms. Let us see how salmons get adjusted to the changes that, occur, that are occurring in the surrounding media. Now, first of all, um, when the salmons are there in the seawater, they again, they have a hypotonic situation outside. In order to avoid the excessive loss of water, they start drinking a lot of water from the uh, sea. Okay, so when they start drinking that dehydration problem, to an extent they can solve, okay? This, this drinking or not drinking behavior, we see depending on whether the fish is present in fresh water or the marine water. Now, water is absorbed in the intestine. When they drink a lot of water, whatever water is getting lost, now the fish is drinking a lot of water to manage the dry water loss. Now, the behavioral and physiological changes a salmon must make moving is not a sudden accomplishment. It is not a sudden change. It is uh, Today, they are having fresh water mechanisms. Tomorrow, they are going to have marine water mechanisms. It is not so. It is a very, very gradual a process as the e as the salmon is moving from ocean to uh, fresh water slowly it starts moving so, so it's gradually it moves towards the ocean and when gradually it is moving towards the ocean ultimately the physiological mechanisms inside the body they start switching from the ocean towards the freshwater body from hypotonic habitat to the hypotonic habitat okay and slowly slowly they get adjusted that is why we use the word acclimatization slowly they get acclimatized to the new environment okay and during this process what happens they begin drinking water swimming in it keeps the kidneys start producing concentrated urine uh, low volume urine and NACL pumps in its gills really reverse their function because they are, they are moving from one habitat to totally opposite habitat. Their physiological changes need to occur. Now, this picture explains you regarding the life cycle of the salmon, and you see. Initially, the adult salmons are seen in sea for one to eight years. They grow, mature, and for breeding reason, they start moving towards the freshwater and the par um, that is developed from the fries larva of the salmon start moving towards the ocean and reaches the place where the adult was present previously, and there they start eating and develop into adult the same cycle continues now the salmons when they are present the mg plus ions and the so4 sulfate ions that are excreted through fecal matter excessive uh, salts that are present in the body they will be excreted through the fecal matter and even the kidneys excrete lot of salts so whatever salts when they are present in the hypotonic medium, they will be excreted by the kidneys. And again, here the chloride secreting cell, they also excrete a lot of water. And sodium ions, chloride ions are excreted by the chloride secreting cells and sodium ions diffuse passively out of the water. Now, this is the condition where the adult is living in ocean water. Ocean water, they are in the hypotonic medium where they're losing a lot of water. At the same time, a lot of salts are entering into their body. And they, to manage this, the fish started excreting highly concentrated urine, first thing. Second thing, 
the kidneys were very efficient in producing highly concentrated urine. It used to conserve a lot of water and the magnesium ion, sulfate ion, sodium chloride, everything is excreted out of the body to maintain the osmoregulation in the marine water. Now, when this salmon moves to the fresh water for breeding purposes, first thing it stops feeding and drinking water. Water drinking behavior we have seen in the ocean, but here it stops drinking water. Exactly the mechanism that we are seeing here is opposite to the eel body. Okay, so what happened in the eel body is an exactly opposite mechanism that is occurring in the salmon. And apart from that, here when they are entering into the fresh water, the problem is going to be for what? Then in the, the surrounding medium, it is hypotonic, excessive water is there. And because of that, a lot of water tends to enter into the body. Now, one of the method is they may eat and drink. When they eat and drink, a lot of water can enter into their body. So they stop feeding and drinking. That minimizes the water entering into the body, hydration problem. And the skin becomes impermeable uh, to water entry due to presence of the cycloid scales. This is one mechanism. And because there is a lot of dilute water in the surrounding medium, the body of the salmon is hypotonic. It is having more salts than the surrounding medium. There is chances that it may lose a lot of salt through uh, urine. So for that reason, the kidneys efficiently reabsorb the salts and they produce a very, very dilute urine here to avoid the problem of uh, to avoid the problem of hydration. They produce dilute urine, and the chloride secreting cells that were uh, uh, eliminating uh, the lot of chloride ions in the ocean they reverse their function and they start reabsorbing the uh, chloride ions they start reabsorbing the salt ions this helps the salmon to manage the osmoregulatory change in their habitat okay now the chloride ions that are present they have to be actively reabsorbed because it is happening opposite to the concentration so because it is against the concentration gradient it should be an active process so reabsorption of the chloride ions is an active process. Now, in summary, coming to the last slide, students, we have seen a small regulation in migratory fish. Two examples we have considered, one from anadromous and one from catadromous. The anadromous migratory fish is the eel from freshwater to ocean. And the catadromous migration salmon, it is from ocean to fresh water. Both of them face two different osmoregulatory situations so that they uh, switch between fresh water to ocean water and ocean water to fresh water. And these are the more uh, important changes that they do while traveling to fresh water and marine water for example eels when they're traveling to the ocean they drink a lot of water and uh, chloride cells and kidneys excrete excessive salts that are entering into their body and the salmons when they enter into the fresh water they stop feeding they stop drinking water their body is impermeable to water and also um, kidneys start conserving the salts that are going to be lost through the urine and the chloride secreting cells reabsorb a lot of salts actively to maintain the osmoregulatory balance of the body. Okay, so that's it regarding the migratory fish osmoregulation mechanisms. Thank you all for watching. These are the references.